G'day guys, and today Sean and I are going to do the review which was between Geelong and Collingwood. At the MCG it was Collingwood by 24 points and the Pies do us a nice number once again. Very disappointing result and um, pretty salty times for us. Very much so. You guys will start thinking I am back with the Cats. I, I didn't get to see it once again. <laughs> Thanks Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in the old interleague which was not a bad result in the end because... I would have been even more frustrated if I was watching it live. I had the old radio happening, but in between watching and bad mm. reception and interviewing and things, heard a fair bit of it, but I could not believe that opening quarter, which, given my work and stuff, I didn't really hear much at all about, but I'll let you talk more about what went wrong there, because obviously that was the crux of it, really, but I still felt we could probably come back, and it didn't surprise me that we worked our way into it. We sort of did it ugly, you know, we never really got yeah. going, it wasn't ever pretty, but we muscled our way back into it, we sort of weighted numbers and natural class sort of rising to the top, but mm. to get within, was it eight, nine points, whatever it was, yeah. Eight. Yeah. you just got to win that, I mean, we, yeah. we really should have won in the end, I know that's probably not the big talking point, that we didn't get the four points, it's more so addressing how you can come out like that and showing a lack of respect, getting yep. ahead of ourselves, you know, why. It was similar to the Giants. I mean, not that we didn't come out disrespectful to them, but the way that we came back from sort of six or seven goals mm, got true. so close, but, you know, seemed to have all the momentum. And then, you know, the yep. opposition seems to steady. It's, it's a funny little psychology thing, but... Mm, so they were talking about it, and they said, yeah, it's one thing to come back from it, but to get him to... Obviously, diminished the lead and get in front is another thing. Absolutely. You see that in all lines of sport. Um, tennis is a good one. But, yeah, I don't know what's going on, mate. I mean, it, I don't think it's panic stations, of course. It's one game that we'll look at and go, gee, that was disappointing. Mm. But I think it's a matter of um, just working out why that was the case. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, it's got to be a mental thing because I don't think going forward, I, I don't harbour any real concerns over our style of footy or anything like no, that. It doesn't true. change my perception to our chances, but it does, you know, put a little bit of doubt about, you know, the mindset of the group. And you'd, you'd hate to mm. think that they thought they were just simply too good for the pies and it was going to happen. But, <laughs> you know, I maybe there was an element of that. You can't disregard how good Collingwood obviously were. No, definitely not. But, uh, I didn't see the game, of course, just listened. Give us your thoughts, mate. What happened in that first quarter? Not much. No. Um, <laughs> not much from our Scott, point of view, eh? Scotty, um, even, I think they they seem to be out earlier at games, and particularly at the G, and they just have a bit of a chat to almost um, acknowledge that this is a danger game, and that's what they said, um, the commentators mm. are saying. So it's like, well, did that message not get through? We're calling it amazing. Who knows? Mm. But probably a bit of both. But, yeah, again, Collingwood spruiking us in the opening term, as they have in the past. Uh, Reminded me of a very painful game back in 2010. Yeah. Uh, the prelim final where they just went bang, bang, bang. And it was just like, wow, this game's basically over. We can work our way into it. But it's unlikely that we'll take home the points no matter what. Um, deplorable effort and performance is the only thing I can put it down to. As you mm. said, mate, seven goals to nothing in the opening term. Well, no goals. But yeah, um, you, you just kind of wonder how... Even after maybe a couple of goals, that there's no response. You'd, you'd think maybe mm. sort of put a man back or just stem the flow for a bit. But Collingwood just got control in the middle all quarter, and uh, they made our mid midfields look second rate. And you reel off the name Selwood, Dangerfield, and Duncan, Caddy in the middle. You kind of think how do they get beaten when we've got a pretty good setup? Ruckman mm. uh, makes no sense at all, but. Yeah, look, one of the big things, mate, was we allowed Collingwood far too much time and space. When they, they ran and spread the ball really well, and that was probably another reason they managed to uh, get so much contribution and reward for their effort because they were able to work harder and better for each other, better than what we were. And their commitment to the, the play of the ball was fantastic. Like, it was one time in the last quarter, I sell at the ball, and there's four pies chasing after him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's effort. It's um, yeah, that's it's a work right. Yeah, absolutely. Above the above the ears there, or above the above the shoulders, I should say. Um, so yeah, it was it was hard watching on. I was pretty, oh, bad. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of sitting there, kind of shell shocked, probably like Scotty was, and probably like the cats were. So yeah, yeah, and then similar with you, mate. I don't, I'm not too concerned about it because I know what we can do and 
what we have produced has been good against the best and beaten the best. Yeah. So I don't hold too much um, negativity towards this game, but it's pretty deplorable the way it came out. Yeah, I don't think it's a crisis for the big picture, but that yeah. little picture in itself <laughs> is a little painting of what can be when you don't mentally rock up. So That's right. Yeah. Very concerned. They seem to do that a little bit, mate. It's, um, yeah. Playing like millionaires. <laughs> No right to. <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, and as I sort of said, yeah, they work so much harder than us. Work very efficient going forward, and they were just able to hit up targets. And complete opposite with us when we were going forward, it was very stagnant. It was very slow movement from the back half. It was lots of kick mark, kick mark, and sort of yeah. You look when Colin got the ball, it was just them streaming forward and looking mm. so dangerous. And you know, a lot of that, their midfield was all that amazing games, and yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. You put those two together. You know, they probably really win. Our midfield going bad and their midfield going pretty well. So, yeah, they're a bit of a bogey team, mate. They've won five of the last seven against us, and uh, my worry was very well justified, uh, even though I still tipped us, but was never truly really confident because they, they can just get us. They they play the same pressure <laughs> in 2008 where they yeah. spruiked us as well, that manic pressure of the ball, and uh, they were on a task and they achieved it. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think uh, Mitch Duncan was saying that their pressure was intense and I suppose that caused Geelong to sort of play a bit safe and kick down the line. And yeah. as you say, the contrast, Collingwood taking on and running and carrying. And, you know, most games are one out of the middle. You know, it all starts from there. And I think when you look at it just on a basic level, you know, Grundy was influential, maybe not by hit-outs, but I think he had double-figure contested ball. He was really oh, good yeah. and... You know, you look at their key players, Sidebottom, Pendlebury, Trelaw, you know, were Adams, great. Adams, Adams killed Chris it. Yep. was great as well. Greenwood did a number on Selwood. So yeah, it, it, our it, midfield group as a whole were badly overshadowed on the day, which is disappointing. Yeah, to be only four goals in it and our midfield playing horrible and playing probably one decent quarter of footy isn't too bad, but it should mm -hmm. never come to that in the first place. Uh, inaccuracy costs us again. Missed goals at crucial times. That third quarter, man, Bartel, Menzel. Mm. I think someone else missed one. Maybe Kirsten might have missed one as well. Um, yeah, just those moments where you really have to just nail that goal. It's good we came back in the last quarter and the way we started in the last quarter was great, but mm. can't give up that kind of start and you can't miss those shots in the third quarter when you're trying to bring yourself back in the game. Absolutely, mate. Too little, too late. That's all right. First time conceded 90 points for the year and basically 100 points. So that's not too bad looking at in isolation. There's been some really good teams that, besides North Melbourne, that have um, yeah, been a bit surprised and haven't played that well. Hawthorne kicked seven goals on the weekend. So hmm. kind of look at that if you want to benchmark them. Every team's had, besides probably even North with Essendon, probably they've had a bit of a, a shake up there. Every team, it's a, it highlights the evenness of the competition, I think. Yeah, that's probably it does. That's yeah. uh, the silver lining, I guess, if you like. Yeah, for sure, mate. And I suppose North had some slower games and still got wins. You know, they fell asleep against the Saints, had a poor outing against the Bombers. But, yeah. you know, we uh, had a wake-up call in the first quarter and <laughs> weren't good enough to work our way back. And Well, we did, but, you know, you can't expect against a proud club like Collingwood who have had their backs up against it for a while. To just roll over when it really gets to the business end and they responded. Definitely, mate. So we'll move on to the votes. You want to start us off? Yeah, I'll quickly run through it. I normally, if you're a regular viewer, when I don't see, we'll grab my old man's votes, but he cracked it at half time and he was off, so <laughs> yeah, I chucked the radio on after the delay telecast. And uh, But I made up a few votes just by listening to the radio and sort of channeling what a few of them said. Bartel yeah. 3. Seemed to be our best performer and throughout the four quarters at least. Gave Duncan two. I know he's part of the midfield group, but he did seem to be relatively good and was mm. seemingly decent in, in our comeback. And That's I just nice. gave Enright the one, basically, because he was named in quite a lot of people's best. So, Nicely done, yeah. mate. Uh, oh, I've gone Bartel three. He got 23 touches, seven marks, four, to th four tackles as well. And he said disposals. So, um, got more than that. Yeah, look, he was a good contributor and like he was trying to get us back in the game in the third quarter. Mm. Yeah, over the four quarters, like he didn't get a stack of it, but I think he uh, made count what he had. So he was a good contributor. Yeah, to keep that goal, Jimmy, next time. Yeah. Two votes to Lang. I thought he was quite impressive. He got in amongst it, some of the hard ball. 
10 contested possessions. He got 23 all up. I, love, I know you love contested possessions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 23 touches, five marks, mm. three tackles, and he kicked a pretty crucial goal when we really need one. Might have been one of their first goals. So, <laughs> good, good time coming, and it was a very scrappy one. But uh, he got there. Yeah, I, I liked his um, work around the contest and got amongst the, amongst the footy and, yeah, did a lot of good things. Mm. Well, and the one vote to Tommy Hawkins, who got the 12 touches and five marks, four tackles, and he also kicked four goals. Pretty good effort. Three in the last quarter, wasn't it? Yeah, look, the fact that he tried to single-handedly bring us back, get four on the board in what was a not very high-scoring day for us, four yeah. out of the 11 is a pretty good effort. Um, he tried hard and took some really good marks at some really good times, and I don't give him any votes, so. And it highlights how good he can be, because we've been critical of him at times, but yeah. how good he can be if we move the ball and get him to it, get it to him quickly, because Chris Scott in his press conference said, we'd like to give it to Tom Moore. <laughs> he feels if Absolutely. they aren't really going to him enough, or not enough, but moving it quick enough, and well, then going that one-on-one -on -one and just, you yeah. know, going one-on-one -on -one footy. So it highlights, you know, he's still a power forward if we utilise it. Correctly. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, <clears throat> chopping block, mate, will be kind of tough. Yeah, it'd be a little but, bit tough, but, but I've got one in mind, and I reckon he's right on the bake. Yeah, you're thinking Jed Buse? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, <laughs> look, I mean, as I've said a few times, I didn't see it, but from what I'm hearing, what I'm re-watching, I hold grave concerns for not just his ability to be selected next week, but him as a footballer. I think... Um, that, Jed. Well, he's been on the old chopping block a couple of times, and we've talked about it off-air quite a few times, and... He's just not a good user of the ball. He yeah. seems to be a step behind AFL pace at times. <laughs> and he is sort of your Nick Smith style lockdown player. Yeah. And, you know, is there room for a player like that in many sides these days? I'm not sure. I mean, we have a guy like Ruggles. We have, you know, your Mackie types, your Enright types who are good mm. rebounders and can play small. Is there a need for Buse? I'm not sure. We're sort of giving him that opportunity. I mean, Ruggles only came in the side because Lonigan was a late withdrawal, so mm, they yeah. sort of opted to give Buse that chance. Yeah. And he's not taking at the moment, so he yeah. must be looked at for sure. And if he can't fire up, he will surely be delisted by the end of the season. I think mean, Jordan Murdoch, who was awful in twos, I felt. Just uh, oh, yeah, the he's, forgotten he's, man. You saw it, yeah. Yeah, I forgot, man. But as far as Paul, chopping block... Paul and Smith, I don't think, had too much of it. I yeah. Don't know what he had, but... I think he had... 12 or something, something like that. Yeah. Uh, not many touches. It's amazing how a guy can dominate VFL level and then get up to the big stuff. And I guess his pace really lets him down at that level. Yeah. He seems slow by foot, but also slow by mind as well. He's just uh, <laughs> not up to scratch with the pace at the moment. No. I have a bit more faith with him, but I don't think it's really a personnel issue. I mean, we it was clearly a mindset thing in how we came to play, as they say. Yeah. Absolutely. Which um, is more in depth than just that little throwaway saying, but I think they'll address that that more so than an ins and outs perspective. Of course, they'd like to see Lonigan make his way back in. He was out with concussion. Um, yeah, it would have been handy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He always does his job, really. But uh, not too much to talk about as far as the reserves which are on today on the TV, and I watched a bit of the standouts were probably Smets and Cowan. I really like their games. Give Cowan a go. Yeah. Over yeah, Buse, easy, sure. And he played a reasonable amount midfield as well, which I liked. Almost Smets played more half-back and drifted midfield too. But, uh, yeah, one bloke who's really struggling to find any form and touch is Nathan Vardy. Just uh, looks mm. lost. So yeah. I think he'll be a while away, and I'd be disappointed if they just gave him sort of a free game. Yeah, hopefully See not. how he goes. Let him find his form in the two. So that's a wrap of a bit of BFL. Little whacking old Jed Buse there, yeah, and uh, yeah. I hope he can improve. But at the moment, he's been—he's not new to the system. He's been around a while, and he has. Um, and also, gee, that hold the ball when he had it in the back pocket. You might have heard it on the radio. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what he was thinking. I can't remember seeing it. Well, the way they the replay, or the goal sort of happened, and the replay was never really shown properly. The way they broadcast over the radio was just like, I just had no idea. He sort of <laughs> caught and. Limp. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't see it either. I mean, yeah, it was pretty poor. Yeah. But, uh, we need to respond next week, mate. We do, because we've got the Blues at Etihad Stadium. And uh, they've been in good touch, though. They've won four of the last five. They obviously got a bit of a touch-up from North Melbourne, but they've had they've got a few key big boys out, uh, Cruiser and K. 
because both will be on the pond for a while. So yeah. that'll help us, <laughs> as selfish as that sounds. But look, again, I'm not 100% confident with this one, but Brendan Bolton gets his defensive mechanisms in place and they play their game. We don't show up properly, which we have done in the past. Um, can get a little bit of a shaking up ourselves. So, look, I'd be more shocked from to this from this perspective if we lost than uh, the loss to Collingwood. But, um, yeah, we should be winning this final, I reckon, us by three goals. I don't think it'll be too easy, but we could also win by 10 goals. Yeah. That's that's the scope, scope we're in, and that's the inconsistency we have. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Certainly, I mean, I expect a ferocious display on, on Sunday. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, I hope so. <laughs> we really do. Yeah. I mean, to be really honest, I'm not too worried. I mean, I don't rate Carlton highly at all. I know Bolton's got them playing some good footy, but they haven't really showed an ability to knock off quality sides. So I think they're an improved team, but we should surely have their measure. I mean, if if you're a Carlton fan, you're thinking, gee, Geelong's going to be fired up, look yeah. out sort of thing. But as you say, we can't afford to take them lightly. You know, we can't go in with that sort of mindset, and I'd, and I'd be shocked if we did. I mean, I would expect this our first quarter at least to be just enormous, to really come out firing. Mm. That's, that's what you'd yeah. expect, and um, that's what I want to see. Yeah, you got a rough margin in mind, mate. <laughs> rough margin, I'd say six to eight goals, but as you say, if we get rolling, it could extend beyond the 10-goal mark. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we want that 10 goal mark, keep that percentage going. Yeah. All right, so that's a wrap up of our review of the Geelong and Collingwood game. Geelong, uh, not Geelong, Collingwood home, 24 <laughs> points. <wish>, mate. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, so uh, Dara Joe had the Geelong goal video highlights up, so the link will be in the description there for you guys to check out the goals we kicked. 11 this week. <laughs> we have more scoring shots as well, mate. Yeah. Um, there you go. So, um, Feel free to like the video, share it around, subscribe for more of these and Q&As, AFL Q&As and tips as well. So get all over it. Thanks for hanging around, guys. We'll see you all next time.